Hi, everyone. I'm Mathieu, and today I'm going to present you what I've been doing as an interchip in Modular, um, which I'll call now library optimization, another way to get high performance in Mojo. And I should preface this by saying this is something we've been working on the Mojo language. It is not available yet. But this is something we've been kind of trying out internally as like experimentation on what we can do with Mojo currently. So before going there, we probably want to see what's the actual problem. So let's look at two examples of C++ code, and let's see how Clang currently optimizes this. If we take the first example, we just have a function that just creates a string, and it doesn't do anything with it. The string is long enough that it doesn't trigger small string optimization, and what you might expect Clang to do is to just remove it, because it's unused, it's, we don't care about it. And if you ask our best friend Goldbolt, actually it does not, and that might be surprising to some of you. Well, it turns out that the reason this is not optimized, at least in C++17, is because there's one function call that doesn't get inlined. And because it isn't inlined, the compiler can act, cannot actually deduce that this is just kind of just a malloc and that there's nothing really important going on there. So it turns out that if we manage to inline this, we just everything gets probably eliminated and everything works. So one problem we have in some of these, I mean, and that's not only for string, but that's also for the data structures, is that the compiler needs to inline everything to be able to understand what it is doing. And that's kind of one fundamental problem we have um, in like C++, let's say. Another example we have that show a different kind of problem we can see is if we take an example of a vector, let's say a vector of ints, we push back a value, we get the last value of the vector, so itself, and then we remove the last value we just added and re just return the value. We can already see that getting the last value after doing a pushback is just the equivalent of returning the value that you would just add instead. And one might think that if you have a vector that you push something and then you pop it, this should be equivalent to doing literally nothing to the vector as well. If we ask Godbold again, we see that it's not as easy as it seems. But this time, the problem is not an inlining problem. This time is the fact that semantically, doing a pushback is actually a bit more complex than just adding an element. It may also double the capacity in some cases. And when you double the capacity, you have a reallocation. And this is something you still observe. Um, and the compiler can observe it. So the compiler knows it cannot optimize it away because doubling the capacity is actually having kind of a side effect. So, Pushing back and then popping back is not just doing nothing. It's just saying double the capacity if the vector has already the maximum size given its capacity. So there's a lot of other examples we can see even in the standard library. Uh, so yeah, this is illegal. There's a lot of other examples that we can see even in the standard library in C++ where we might want to do some optimization that either requires a lot of inlining or that requires optimizations that are actually illegal at the, let's say, LLVM level. We can just, if we check that an element is in a hash map and then we just add it if it's not there, this is just literally a try and place. If we have a multiplication and an add, it could be just replaced by a fuse multiply and add. If we have a sort and then we search for an element, we can just do a binary search instead. And if we have a for loop and a pushback in a for loop, we know that we can just add a reserve before. So then we have the exact capacity at the beginning and we don't have to do multiple reallocations. Well, all of these examples are quite interesting. They're also very small, but also you want to apply this after inlining, after other optimization in your compiler. And most of these are not done by any system programming language I know, at least. And one of the reasons is that we have information that is lost way too early in the compiler pipeline. When we define a library, let's say the std vector library, we have only functions that are partially defined. We say that the capacity may change, but we don't say it actually doubles. We don't say in which cases necessarily it's going to uh, change for, let, let's say, a std vector. From our library specification, we define the actual implementation, which like the CPP files. And in that case, everything is fully defined. And then we just removed a lot of, let's say, um, unknown, um, unspecified parts of the library. From that, we give it to the Clang front end, and then we give to LLVM. And what happens is that at the Clang and the LLVM level, those are actually illegal optimization at that point because we lost the information very early on. And this is, as I said, in Clang, this is going to happen the same thing in, with Rust. This is going to happen the same thing in Zig. 
And so what we've been doing is trying to figure out how, with Mojo, can we actually do something a bit different? Instead, can we just, in our library implementation, add something more that would just allow us to kind of solve these issues? And the something more here is user-defined optimization using user-defined libraries. So that way, we have also early optimization in our pipeline, and that also reduced pressure in LLVM because we just removed a lot of cases. We did some inline. We don't need to do more um, removing of functions or like optimizations. So how can we solve actually the problem? So as someone that has done MLIR for a long time, my first thought is, can we just add more dialects? Just like we have the traditional Mojo dialects that already exist. Can we just add dialects for each part of the standard library? Well, the problem is this doesn't scale at all because the standard library can get larger and larger. And it's actually going to outgrow the number of dialects you traditionally have in, like, let's say, an MLIR-based compiler. Uh, the other problem is that it complexifies the compiler itself. No, the library is not part, is part of the compiler and not part of something different. And also, it doesn't generalize to user library. If someone wants to write their own vector implementation, they cannot benefit from all the optimization the compiler can do with the standard libraries. So the solution we have is to kind of be able to plug in some way your own dialect. But it's not going to be MLI dialect is going to be something a bit different. And if you can do it for the standard library, you can probably also do it for any user library dialect. So that's why we call this kind of library optimization. It just targets all kind of libraries. So how does it actually look like? If let's say we want to add a new operation in Mojo for something that is just multiplying an integer by two. And what you would have before is just a function in a library. And what we want now is a kind of MIR sort of operation. Well, the solution is just adding a decorator. And this is all actually you need for defining a new operation because it's kind of better than doing this, let's say, for instance, in ODS, because it's familiar for Mojo user. You just add a decorator. There's no need for defining, for learning a new language, like C++ or the stable gen for new dialects. And it's sufficient for like all the cases presented before, and there's only a few changes in the, that are required in the compiler, because now you're still operating on functions and things that like we don't have to add a new set of optimization and to handle um, custom operation everywhere in the pipeline. And it's also very sufficient, because we have all we need in usual MLIR operations. We have a verifier. That's just the input output of a function. We have a lowering. This is literally a function call. An interpreter as well, because it's also just a function call. And we have a few interfaces that we can define. For instance, we know there's no side effects in that case, because we only do integer operations. And from that, we can now define optimization. So if we have, let's say, two operations, uh, x times 2, and an operation that just do the addition, well, we can just define in Mojo uh, an actual optimization for these operations, which we can call kind of canonicalization pattern, which are optimization that are called whenever one of the custom operation appears. So here in that case, whenever we see the add function being called, we would call in the pipeline at some point the add mol2 optimization. And those use just the MLIR Mojo API. It's just API calls to MLIR that can then be used inside the Mojo compiler. And on top of this, we can just reference the operation directly by using a bit of Mojo metaprogramming and a bit of magic. And it just kind of works. And from that, we can handle kind of simple pattern-based operations. The problem is, so if you, let's say, want to have a fuse multiply and add, that's quite easy to match in MLIR. But if you want to do something like the push back, pop back example we had, the equivalent in Mojo being app and then pop, this is a bit more complex because now we need some kind of memory analysis in some way. Because you want to know that the pop happens right after the append. And this is not something we can easily deal with. And if you have, let's say, an operation in the middle, you don't actually know what's the kind of uh, relationships between uh, the pop and, and the previous happens. You don't know if v in that case and w alias or not. And that means that you don't know if you can trigger your optimization or not. So for that, we just have a small implementation of what's called memory SSA in LLVM, which in that case tell you, uh, depending on if there is aliasing or not, if the optimization can trigger. So in that case here, if there's no aliasing, you know that pop is right after an append. If there is an aliasing, then you know that pop might have one of the two predecessors, which is uh, either the append on v or the append on w. 
So with this, we can actually do the first optimization I presented you in the very beginning. So we, we have the pop, push back pop app. This is literally just looking at pop, seeing if there is a unique predecessor that's called append, and then we just write it with the uh, MLI API. We just check if there is the same value for the vector, and then we can remove the operation. Similarly, for the string example, it's just checking if we have a deletion of a string um, that is after an initialization, and that just works. And it's quite simple if you look at it. So in conclusion, what we have is that there's a lot of kind of optimization, library optimization we want to write. Um, the reason is there is a loss of information quite early in the pipeline in most programming languages. And we kind of want to solve this issue by just being able to write in your language new operations and using memory SSA to kind of simplify uh, everything as pattern-based rewriting. Thank you. Okay.